we've talked a lot about what the issues are, but what about the attitudes from the community? When it comes to, you know, I, I do a talk show and we have a lot of people who call in who live in very white suburbs, who live, you know, not even in St. Louis County, so they may not even know many minorities. They, they want simplistic answers. They, I've, I've heard it many times when we talked about racial profiling and, you know, driving while black. People don't believe that it happens because if it doesn't happen to you, then you don't believe that it happens. And it's nice to believe that in a fair world that would never happen. So is that an important thing to discuss? Is it important for the community to understand that that does happen? Or do you move forward without changing opinions on that? I think, I think the fact that you have a generation of people that they feel they don't have a voice, so they're resorting to physical action, that in itself calls for a new line of communication. I mean, I, I applaud everyone for being up here and I'm, and I'm so happy to be up here and to be part of this discussion. And at the same time, I can't help to think where are the young people in our community that are influencers, where are they here, where are we, are, we're still not listening to what they have to say. And when I see what's happening out there, that's where a lot of that pain is coming from, is, is from that younger group, that, that generation that, that's coming up that feels they don't have a voice. And when, when I hear people say, oh, that doesn't happen, what you're saying is, I really don't want to listen to what you have to say. Um, when it'd be much easier to say, you know what, I got a minute. Well, let's, what are you talking about? And you don't have to, you don't have to pretend like you completely understand because People realize when you don't get it. I just want you to hear what's going on, and then maybe at some point in time, you're going to have an aha moment, or if nothing else, then you'll be able to, to relate to what I'm saying or see what it is I'm saying and be able to identify it. So when it comes up later, you can say, oh, you know what? This is exactly what he was saying at that point. I need to start listening and figuring out what's happening so I can change that particular component so it doesn't repeat over and over again. I was uh, the lead chairperson for a recent organization called Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. And here's the significant thing And you thing wore about high it. heels, right? I, I, and this is why I'm bringing it up, because they, I wasn't going to wear high, high heel shoes because they told me either you could wear high heels or you could put a flower on in your shoe. I had already resigned that I'm not putting on any high heels. <laughs> I'm going to put a flower on my shoe. But when I got there, all these men were out there, they had the sizes, 13, size 13, all these <laughs> men were in these heels. So I had to go up and say something to this crowd that's gathered downtown. So I say, man, all you guys have heels on. Do you have a size 13? I put them on. I have three girls, I've been married 21 years. When I put the heels on, immediately I got the picture, walk a mile in her shoes. <laughs> and I realized, I've been seeing my wife do it for years, even my, my teenagers walk with these shoes on. When I had them on for less than a minute, I couldn't believe how in the world, I just had so much more respect to a, a whole nother level as it relates to how these beautiful ladies walk with these heels on. And I say that to say in this example, our country, it was a time where nations considered themselves successful based on how the poor did and the marginalized did in their country. Even in the scriptures, the Hebrew people were told to form the fields, but leave the corners for the poor. We have to understand, even though in certain communities, we may be doing fine. But when we take the time to listen to that young man and find out what's it like being in your shoes, it gives you now a heart of compassion and you realize there's a human element involved. And then you start realizing there are some things, just as you said, that can be done. And the other thing I wanna say, because it's been a whole lot of rocks thrown in our country, we do a whole lot of things well here. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember that, that there's a reason people are getting on life rafts and things like that to get to this country. So we can solve, I keep going back to, I am very optimistic, Vern, that 
we can get this done. And it starts with communication and then looking at what I call, as it relates to the case, anything that any of us say, it's all subjective. But as it relates to uh, uh, ethnicity has been pulled over, there are some factual things that we can look at. Own it like we do on a football field. When I look at the film, especially in the NFL, you're going to be great. You're going to have some bad plays. But when you see your bad play, you better not make excuses for it. You own it and you learn how to do the better play, to do the play better the next play. That's what we have to do. Own it if there's some discrepancies in the factual data. And then come together, what are some things we can do to change this environment so everybody in the community, community can feel like a part of the community?